Okay, so what's the Lagrangian method? Well, let's dive in with an example. Suppose we've got uh, a utility function over food and shelter, and we've got an income constraint like so. Okay, how do we use the Lagrangian method to find the amount of food and shelter that we're going to buy? Well, we're going to start by setting up a uh, our Lagrangian, okay? So we're going to use a fancy L to represent this equation, and we're going to write our uh, the thing we're trying to maximize first. This is called an objective function. It's your objective, okay? It's your goal. And by that I mean the thing you want to maximize. So we want to maximize utility. So let's that's our objective, and that's the first part of a Lagrangian equation. Now, we can't just leave it at that. We can't say how much food and shelter uh, uh, should you consume to maximize your utility, because the answer we'll get is you should consume an infinite amount. And that's not an option to us. We have to somehow add in the fact that this person is constrained. And the constraint is that the amount of food and shelter they buy has to be equal to or less than their budget, okay? So how do we incorporate that? Well, with the Lagrangian, we've got this uh, way of doing that, okay? And the way we do it is we add to this utility function the constraint, but we multiply the constraint by a new variable called uh, the Lagrange multiplier, okay? So this is how we write it. This guy here is called the Lagrange multiplier. It, it's a, a variable. I chose to use uh, the variable of the Greek letter lambda, and that's the common that's common for this uh, application. This in here is the constraint. It's an equation that limits your choices. So we need this constraint to be uh, satisfied. Uh, by that I mean that it essentially has to be a positive number or not a positive number, it has to be non-negative, okay? So what do I mean by that? Hold on, let me just write that down. If this equation was negative, what would that mean? This thing that's inside the brackets, inside the parentheses. If that was negative, that would mean that the amount you spend on food and shelter exceeds your income. Okay, so when you subtract your expenditure from your income, you get a negative number. And if we're saying it must be non-negative, then that means it has to be either zero or positive. If it's positive, that's saying that your income is greater than the amount you're spending, and that could be the case, uh, but it won't tend to be the case under uh, non-satiation because more is better, and, that, and if the prices are not zero, then that means you're going to buy more if you're given the option to maximize your utility. But it also means that this constraint could be equal to zero exactly, and that's the typical uh, situation. That means that you're exactly spending all your income, and if you subtract your expenditure, which is PF times F and PS times S, away from your income, there's nothing left over, okay? So what we've built here is kind of a joint function that combines our objective over here, the thing we want to maximize, which is utility, and it also combines our constraint, and we can kind of get them to speak the same language and sort of contribute to our understanding with the, by adding this little Lagrange multiplier in front of the constraint, and then uh, that kind of converts it into units that are applicable. You can kind of think of it as doing that, all right? So it's a weird looking thing, but it turns out it's a very useful uh, tool. Okay, so now that we've set this thing up, let's talk about how we use it to find our uh, find the amount of food and shelter we need.